All right, folks. Welcome to another Friday, Friday fishing forecast. I'm able, I was able to get out on the water today. Uh, thankfully, I've got some guys at the office doing some work for me, so I wanted to drop the boat really quick. Since uh, there was a few Friday fishing forecasts ago that I did something where I went out and searched for new spots and and talked about the machines, and people absolutely loved it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today is, is we're going to get out there. We're going to search some, some new areas or some areas that I have not fished and see what we can come up with. Um, I'm fishing a little bit north. You can see straight back behind me is, um, is the Little Manatee and uh, the Inn at Little Harbor. So I'm, I'm north today. I wanted to see if there's fish up here. So let's so go see what we can do. We're going to talk about our progression and then we'll, we'll get into the Friday fishing forecast. And if you have some time, I'm gonna be up at the King of the Beach Community Party Fest. So what I was saying, I'm horrible about checking my battery on my GoPro and it died on me. We'll be up at the Southeastern booth tonight at the King of the Beach Community Party Fest. They have a live music, they have happy hour, they have food trucks, beer trucks, all kinds of stuff up there. So if you're out and about in the Madeira Beach area, come by and see us at the Southeastern booth. Come say hey, come shoot the crap with us. And uh, we would love to, to, to meet you and see you. So again, uh, I'm gonna be fishing the King of the Beach with them with Sunray on Saturday. Chad's going out with some friends, uh, but I'll be filming our king fishing um, journey through the tournament. It's only the second kingfish tournament I've ever fished. So uh, we'll see what happens, but let's get to the area and let's start scoping around and see what we can find. All right, what I did is I came through this area uh, and marked up a ledge and now I'm kind of sitting where I want to be but not necessarily right where I want to be so I'm gonna drop here and see if I get anything it's showing some fish but I'm not totally liking the mark itself so I may have to adjust this this boat is sitting completely different than what I thought the wind has shifted and that's the thing is when you come out here understanding how your boat's going to sit before the wind was coming out of the southwest now it's coming out of the north actually the west and uh so it, it completely shifted my boat from 33 feet of water out to 41 feet and um i haven't even gotten a bump so i may have to adjust back up and get on the ledge because i'm out in the channel itself all right, so I got on this spot, I marked some ledges, dropped the bait down, and I have not gotten a bite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this looks like, and you can see how good this looks, but nothing's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the trolling motor. As you can see, it's marking fish or something down on the bottom. And when I come up the ledge, And you can start seeing the shadow lines there. What I'll do is I'll turn the boat so you get a better idea of what I'm looking at. It's going to be off to the right. See that right in there? That's where I was fishing. And nothing. So I've got it marked, see if we come back to it. But there's definitely ledges and stuff on the on the edge of the shipping channel there. See there's another there's a ledge there, ledge there. You can see a little bit of the little bit of the shadow line of the ledge. And see that that's what I try to explain to people is that um, if you see something, fish it because you never know there's spots that I have that you wouldn't think that there would be a fish on it and all of a sudden bam 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 it doesn't look it little tiny little things that I see on the machine I'm like ooh, that looks pretty good or ooh, that that looks different so I'm gonna go check it out and that's exactly what I'll do so every stop that you go to you're not gonna catch fish as I explained to a lot of people that I move around a lot and so it, it, it can give you an idea of you know what I'm looking at and what I'm looking for and just because it looks good just like that spot looked halfway decent doesn't mean that 
it, it may mean that the fish aren't even ready to bite on that particular area or that particular spot. You can move 100 yards down and just start waylaying the fish. So that's why it's so important to go out and try to find as many spots as you possibly can because you want to have that opportunity to, to, to jump around and to find new locations because these fish move around so much. I, I know I talk about that, but these fish definitely move around enough to where it does make a difference. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually heading into the channel itself. I just marked something there, but again, nothing, I may have to go back and look at that one though. All right, folks, we've stopped at about four or five different spots, caught one little gag, a blowfish, and uh, I'm pretty sure we had a kingfish on. I had a flat line out and had a huge, huge boil behind the boat. Started stripping out drag and broke me off. I only have 20 pound test for that. So I'm just playing around seeing, I'm supposed to fish that kingfish tournament. So I'm just seeing what, uh, if I could find any kingfish up, up this way, but that'll be a long trip from us because we're coming out of clear water. So <laughs> that's a long trip. Wow. All right. I don't even have that marked. So I'm gonna mark that. That looks pretty good. That's definitely part of the ledge. There's another part right there. I do have a couple of those marks though, but they're out more out into the channel. We'll take a look at these. That one was a pretty good. Let's take a look at it. Now these are these are just ripples from the boat props, the big boat props that come through here. You can see I have two older marks here, but that's not where I marked that one spot. The other spot was off of it. And that's the key is that if you're going along, there's a, like this spot is 99 and this is 100. So that tells you 800, 800 marks ago. Um, but um, we're gonna go by this because that, that, that mark that I just had was pretty good. That was a pretty good ledge. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up on this spot see if I can if I can do anything I'm gonna go drive by it one more time at a different angle and see what we can find because seeing it in this this angle is not showing me a lot so I need to go at it at another angle just to see what I can like well okay there that's what I'm seeing right in there funny part is though it's not marking a lot of fish which doesn't really mean anything because a lot of times I don't try to mark fish um, but we'll see what happens now see it's marking fish on that secondary ledge right there a little bit not a ton one thing I like to look at too is my prop wash of where I was where I went through you can see where it's it's slick right in here so I kind of pay attention to that so I can get the boat back to where I was. Just little things like that just kind of help you gather what you need to gather. But I'm going to hopefully get on this spot. See, there's a secondary ledge right there. There it is right there. That's the one that's holding fish. All right, so what I'm going to do... And I'm going to use the trolling motor to get me into it, into into the area that I want to be. I'm almost dead on that mark. There it is, right there. Now, of course, you're not seeing anything on the side imaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the the it should bring me up just a little bit. But it's marking fish down here, so we're going to drop down and see what we can do. And as soon as the bait got to the bottom, gone. So, as you saw, this ledge was not very big at all. Now it's telling me too that there's bait here. There's, there's thread fins popping the surface. So what I might do is throw out a free liner too, see if I can get a kingfish or something. I don't 
know what that was. Mm. Taking about three arm lengths of our 20 pound fluorocarbon, which we will be selling in 30 and 40 pound here, probably within the next week or so. We've got 15 and 20 pound braid that we're coming out with. That will be out this week also. So if you don't like using the real light stuff, we do have 15 and 20 coming out. But all I'm gonna do is I'm using a, an improved Albright knot. Is um, what it is, is that I put it in a loop like this and go seven times around. Four, five, six, seven. Then I go back through the loop like this, right through the loop. Then I reverse it once, twice, and then back through the loop, tighten down. Now what I found is this won't allow that knot to slip. And I like that knot personally. It's really strong. And I just clip the ends. And we're ready to go. Right now I'm using a half, half ounce Stewie because this tide is dead. I could probably even go lighter than that. But I'm gonna stick with the half. What I do on that is I make an overhand knot like that and then go through the eye and then pull the tag in go once twice around the main line and go back through the loop tighten it down cut it off and there you have a perfection loop What's strange is that um, I've been using mainly cut bait today and um, I've caught a fish here and there but nothing spectacular, not like it has been to where on the cut bait they were on it. I dropped that live bait down there, they were on it almost immediately so um, maybe the trend is changing, maybe they're going into the live bait thing now. It's easier when you have a couple of people on the boat that you can try different things until somebody gets establishes that pattern but when you're by yourself like I am today it can be a little bit tougher because you're only throwing down one bait I won't throw down two rods or anything else like that so as I was not really getting a lot of hits on cut bait I was free lining I was using our slacker jigs and really not much going on so I was I went back to the half ounce stewie threw that down there on a live bait and like I said as soon as it got to the bottom he was on it not a big grouper, but it's better than what I've been catching. So on the uh, on the Stewie, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm hooking them right. Right now I'm hooking them right in the cartilage, right in the nose, right there. So it's a hard part. He goes down. You can see how they move around on these jigs. That's why the Stewie is so popular is because it allows that live bait to move around more naturally on that jig. So that's what I'm using now. I was using the slacker jig. I caught couple of grunts and one small snapper on that and so I decided to throw down the live bait and that changed it Ooh. <laughs> that was the best hit I've had all morning <laughs> that was a good hit that was a good hit now when the tides not moving very fast you want to try to, oh God bless America you want to try to um, Use as light as weight as you possibly can get away with. Because I think on a, on a slower tide with a heavier weight, it doesn't allow that bait to move around too much. When you've got a tide running, you can at least, with a one ounce, you can pick it up and let it go back. When the tide's not really moving, it's barely moving right now, I like to use the lighter, the lighter stewies or the slackers just to be able to give it a little bit more natural presentation. But those last two baits that I sent down just immediately now what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see in the background, but I'm right on the edge of the ledge and people ask me all the time, well, I don't have side imaging, how can I find these spots? Well, you zigzag along the buoy, you're going along the buoy, you see the buoy in the background, you zigzag back and forth into the channel and out of the channel, into the channel, out of the channel. You zigzag back and forth and that what, that what happens is that that allows you to go up and down the ledge, up and down the ledge. So using a sonar, you can find 
You can find the ledges like that. God bless America. Still me. <laughs> I'm not letting him get down. I'm gonna let him tear, tire himself out. <clears throat> oh no, son of a biscuit eater. Come on, man. Oh. Just pulled the hook. Oh, that's disturbing. That was a heck of a fish. Try to stalemate him a little bit, get him up, and then get him up in the column. And I had him up, so I was able to keep him up and let him tire himself out a little bit. He hit it like a freight train like those last two did. But anyway, what I was discussing was going in and out of the channel, back and forth, back and forth. And then you, you can find these ledges just like what I'm fishing right now. And like I said, some of the ledges I've stopped by this morning weren't very productive. But I may have been using the wrong bait the whole time. <laughs> this feels like a snapper. Yep. Nope. Grouper. Um, so I may have been using the wrong bait. I was so keyed in on using cut bait because that's what we had been using for the last like three weeks. But as you can see, every live bait I put down, I'm getting hammered where on the cut bait, I mean, I was getting little, little taps. Now what's been happening in the last two fish that have gone down um, they're actually getting bit on the way down. I'm watching my line and my line is starting to shoot off. So they're actually coming up and grabbing the bait before it ever gets to the bottom. And uh, so they're really aggressive. And, and one thing that I keep, I jumped around to, I think 15 spots before I finally found the ledge that is producing. I'm not sure why those other spots were, were not producing. And it may have been because I was not using the right bait, but um, but moving around is key. <clears throat> moving around is key until you can find that area that is consistent. Better gag. So now I found that I'm sitting in 34 feet of water, right on the edge of the ledge. I hate when they do that. Especially when they're in this in-between size. Fat little sucker. Look at that. Chad, is that your twin? <laughs> so anyway, finding finding the area that's holding fish, you can jump to spot to spot and it all looks good, but you don't get you don't get the fish. Like I said, I, I went to a couple spots and I thought, well, first couple baits down, boom, couple of uh, couple of grunts and then nothing. So I moved and moved and moved and moved. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the Friday fishing forecast. All right, folks, let's get into the Friday fishing forecast. Talk about what we have up for upcoming this weekend. It looks like it's gonna be a good weekend. Uh, winds are gonna be five to 10 on Saturday and 10 to 15 on Sunday. So they're not gonna be horrible like they have been here recently. So I think it's gonna be a good weekend to fish. Now I can tell you when I was on that minor feeding time uh, this morning, it was, as you saw, it was fire. I mean, every bait down, boom, 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 I was getting bit. Um, now I'm out of the uh, minor feeding time. So it's kind of slowed up a little bit. Let's go ahead and talk about the tides for this weekend. Now on Saturday, we have a very long incoming tide until 3.50 p.m. at a 2.57 foot. Then on Sunday, we have a low or high tide, a very slow incoming tide, just like it is today and, yeah, and Saturday, up to a 2.38 foot. So the tides are gonna be really slow this weekend. Um, I feel that it's perfect for uh, grouper and snapper fishing because you can you can free line to them, which today it hasn't worked out too well though. It's it's weird. It's sometimes it's it's dead on, sometimes it's not, but it's just been a weird bite. The minor feeding time was really, really good. Um, I'm gonna fish a little bit longer and then I'm gonna head back to the office. But 
those are the tides let's go ahead and talk about the salooner periods for this weekend now on saturday we have a minor feeding time from 10 21 a.m to 11 21 a.m then we have a major feeding time from 5.09 p.m. to 7.09 p.m. And on Sunday, we have a minor feeding time from 11.24 a.m. to 12.24 p.m. And then a major feeding time from 6.07 to 8.07 p.m. Now, I can tell you that minor feeding time on Friday was dead on. It was That's when I was getting most of my fish. Right now, it's kind of slowed up. Like I said, I'm out of the minor. Uh, by about an hour and a half so it's it's slowed up quite a bit but anyway like i said this weekend i'm going to be up at uh, friday night i'll be at the southeastern booth southeastern fishing tackle booth at the king of the beach uh community party they're going to have a live band there they're going to have happy hour they're going to have food trucks beer trucks all kinds of stuff activities so if you're free and you want to come you you want to come do something tonight that's going on it starts at 5 p.m Again, I'll be in the Southeastern uh, Fishing Tackles booth. And then I'm fishing Sunday or Saturday for uh, the Kingfish Tournament. So I think it's going to be a, a good weekend all around. Uh, finally, the weather's cooperating. I'm out here. I haven't seen any bad water, but then again, I haven't been up towards Piney Point or, or Port Manatee or anything else like that. But I haven't heard any really bad reports either. I've heard really good reports. I've heard some areas have uh, dirty water but the, they're full of fish so everything so far is looking good water temperature just hit 80 degrees it's almost 81 degrees actually there's bait all over the place there's bait on the flats there's bait everywhere so anyway I'm gonna get up go back to the office get some stuff done I just want to thank you to everybody that that bought the slacker jigs we now have those available on our website uh, at tampabayfishingchannel.com we have the slacker jigs, we have the bait cutters, the, the bucket bait cutters, we have the chum droppers, we have all of that available for sale on our website and also all of our jigs, uh, except for the slackers, are at Southeastern Fishing Tackle. So if you're in the Tampa area, they're open on the weekend, stop by and see them, grab some gear from them. Uh, again, thank you very much for all the support, we really appreciate it. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.